Peace ladies, this is Misty Moon and I want to talk to you today about altars and the importance of having an altar. So first of all, no matter what type of imbalance that you're dealing with, whether you have fibroids, whether you're dealing with depression, whether you have toxicity in your relationships, in your home environment, you're having a hard time with time management, no matter how great or small the imbalance may be and whether it's a mental or a physical imbalance, the way to be able to address all of those all of those imbalances is to address it holistically from all dimensions, meaning the body, the mind, the motion, and the spirit. The body is diet, that's exercise. The mind is mental hygiene, being aware of your thoughts. The emotion is emotional intelligence. And then the spirit is you having a connection to your higher self. And an altar is, far, is part of the spirit aspect of your being. And so that's why I feel like this uh, topic is really important. Now, for some of you who do not know what an altar is, what is an altar? So an altar is a sacred space where it's where you have all the items that have value to you in your life. It's where you come to pray. It's where you come to, um, to say your affirmations. It's where you come to meditate. It's where you come to ground. It is the place that's the most sacred to you, that represents everything that's sacred within you. And so every item on your altar has a purpose. It has an intention. Even the way that items are laid out has an intention. When I start, first started doing altars, I was doing it from the philosophy of putting items on the table based on the directions. So like anything that represented, so meaning when I'm saying directions, I also mean the elements like earth, fire, uh, wind and water. So you would have a bowl of water you would have for the water and then you would have the candle for the fire and then a feather would represent air and then earth would be uh, feathers or plants or flowers. But there's so many different ways that you could you can work it. Uh, Queen of Fua, I took her rites of passage a few years ago and the way that she recommends doing altars is that you have, which I used to but I don't have it right now or at this point because your altars are constantly changing too. Uh, that you can also have photographs of your ancestors. You can have a photograph of a family member that that passed away that you were close to or li and a living relative that's still alive that you feel connected to. You can also have a photograph of a deity that you connect to and also someone that you have respect for, someone that you admire as a way of giving you that daily inspiration. So again, it's however you, you want to work it. And um, so I'm just going to share with you what's on my altar just to give you some, some ideas. So first of all, the cloth that I have here, as you see, it's orange. And the reason why that I put orange, because this altar, the, the theme of this particular altar for me is all focused on, well, it's a few different things, but the main focus, I'm in the process of re-renovating my wellness practice. And so um, I have a mind map here. And so what a mind map is, I'll get back to the cloth. What a mind map is, uh, it's, it's a really powerful tool. I highly recommend looking it up, but it's just a way to take the thoughts in your mind, like there's a particular goal or you're just trying to work some things out and putting it on a paper. And then, so you have the idea in the middle and then you have all the little sub ideas that connects to that as far as what actions you need to take to manifest that goal. So actually, I'll just show it to you really quickly here. So I don't know if the words are backwards for you, but... Um, so yeah, so my focus is on my wellness coaching and I have the yoga aspect. I have a coaching. Eventually I'll be doing podcasts. I do sound healing. And these are all the other events surrounding those particular aspects of my wellness coaching practice. So um, yeah, so that's an idea. And maybe I'll, you know, I'll probably do a video about my mapping because it's a really awesome way to, to manifest. So that is the focal point of this particular altar. Um, and so the orange, the reason why that I chose the color orange, because orange represents the Hara chakra, which is the second chakra uh, around your navel. It's the chakra of sexuality. That's also the chakra of creativity, because as women, we create babies. So therefore, we also create ideas. It's where we birth our vision. It's where we manifest. So that's why I have orange here. Okay. And then I also have... Um, a friend of mine gave me a piece of art. It's, it's a, a dragonfly and dragonflies represent transformation. So it's a constant reminder that I'm constantly tr transforming in my healing process. And I have a little snake there as well that also represents transformation. 
And then I have crystals. I have the quartz crystal for clarity. I'm constantly asking for clarity whenever I come to pray. Really, the only thing I pray for is guidance. I, I thank my higher self, my God as I understand it, for another day to be alive, another day to do, do better, to better myself, to move forward in my path. And I also ask for clarity because I've completely given up all control of, of, of trying to control all the different nuances in my life. So I just ask for guidance and I, I, and I'm, and I go from there. So the, the quartz crystal helps assist that. And then the amethyst I have here, uh, it rep it's help it amethyst helps with, with intuition. So it's all kind of connected, the guidance and the intuition and just being able to follow my, my higher self's guidance. So that's why I have those here. I have a photograph of my inner child because uh, I'm also doing a lot of inner child work. That's where a lot of shadow work comes into play. And I'll actually be doing a video about inner child um, this Sunday, or if you're seeing this months ahead, there's a video, there's going to be a video here in the feed uh, on our channel, on my little playlist uh, under womb wisdom about the inner child. And then I have a photograph here. This is something that was inspired from Queen Afua as far as having a photograph of yourself where you felt your best so that you can always tap into that emotion. And this was the first wedding my husband and I had with each other. It was just such a beautiful moment. So I have that there. And then I have like little prayer cards and a journal and the peacock feathers represents Oshun. She's the African, African uh, goddess of sensuality. So it keeps me connected to that central part of myself. So again, everything here has an intention. So it's really up to you however you wanna work it. But again, if you, when it comes to healing, if you're coming to this page because you're looking for inspiration of how to create some type of balance in your life, again, I can't stress this enough, to make it sustainable, you have to address the spirit, the emotional, the mental, and the physical aspect of yourself. And again, creating an altar that is that helps create balance in the spiritual part of your life. Because again, this is the place where you come to meditate, where you come to journal, where you come to, to pray, you know, if you just need some quiet. And that's another thing too, you wanna make sure that you put your altar and a place in your, in your house where it's, it's undisturbed. You know, like if there's like a, or if, if you know, if you're limited with space, like find a corner in that, in that particular house. And, and perhaps maybe when people or when your house mates or your vet relatives are asleep, that will be the time that you connect with your altar. And it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It doesn't have to be all these things. It could just be a, a candle, you know, but it, it's all about the intention. So, um, yes, that's my share. So I hope this helped in some area or some way or another, um, have fun with it. It's a great opportunity to, be creative and keep it fresh. You know, like every, so so a few months, like maybe at least every season at the very least, change your altar, you know, but give it love. You know, and another last thing I wanna say in conclusion, I normally have flowers, but the vase is really big, so it would have been disturbing for this video, but it's also great or ideal to have a plant or flowers, fresh flowers on the altar. Because again, that represents earth and it's something that's alive. So it represents the living essence of your of your altar. So like when the flower starts to wilt, then you change them. Or when the when you can tell the flower or the plant needs more water, you can water it. So it's a way to like physically feed the energy of your altar. So um, I just gave you some basics. Um, you know, you can do some more research on it. But again, if you don't have a, an altar, just start simple, just a candle. So anyway, that's my share for today. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sending you so much love and so much light. And I look forward to the next video. Okay, take care. Peace.